Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to take a look at the HP Enterprise Microserver Generation 10. This particular unit is the replacement for my Generation 8 that I sold to save a bit on the power bill as well as uh, gain a little bit of uh, extra memory capacity. So in today's video we're going to do an overview of the machine and uh, let's get started by looking at uh, the specifications that you can uh, get with this machine in particular. You can order the Microserver Generation 10 in dual or quad-core configurations, all both featuring AMD Opteron SOCs. Mine is equipped with the quad-core 2.1 GHz X3421. You can also get 8 to 32 GB of DDR4 ECC unbuffered memory, mine has 16. Onboard SATA RAID, I've solved that with an LSI 9211-8i card. Dual gigabit Ethernet, Radeon R7 graphics, a multitude of USB ports, and even dual DisplayPort outputs, if you so desire, and two PCI Express expansion slots up from one on the Generation 8. Around the back we can see the aforementioned array of ports, the gigabit ports, USB ports, display ports, etc., and of course the exhaust fans for the system and for the built-in power supply that's about 200 watts, and we can also see the dual expansion bays. Getting inside the machine is very straightforward. Just pull off the plastic piece, hinge it away and pull it off and to get into the drive base just pull the tab or push the tab rather pull the drive out and you're set and just put it back in the way it came obviously around the top of the drive cage HP has provided you with 16 screws four for each drive so you can mount them uh, as you wish and uh, I already have SAS drives in mine those will also work just fine because the backplane on the server is still very much SAS like in the previous version to reassemble, of course, do the reverse of everything you just saw. Most of the real disassembly is done from the back. First you have to remove both screws on each side on the back of the machine. One is apparently a little bit tight. And just remove them, these are not captive. Pull the cage back and pull it off. Getting the actual motherboard out of this machine is also very straightforward indeed. You just have to remove all the connectors on the main logic board. So that's one near the RAM. And the last one you have to pull out is the 24 pin connector on the board. But you will also need to remove one screw at the back. It's just one screw that will completely unlatch the entire tray and it will pull out straight. There we go. It pulls out for the first time. And of course remove all of the cables from the logic board like I said which I totally forgot this clip so you'll have to bear with me for a little bit the 24 pin connector is very 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 rough in this uh, and very tight on this motherboard in this machine I've noticed and of course you'll also need to disconnect the cable from the, uh, the mini SAS cable from the logic board or from the SAS card if you have one that's also something very important to mention and the board will pull out like so Here's a better view at the motherboard of the machine. On top we have two RAM slots, the passive CPU heatsink, the CMOS battery, the expansion bay area, and some internal headers like the mini SAS for the hard drives, an internal USB, an internal SATA, and that's basically it. And here's a slightly better look at the expansion area. One is a PCI Express 3.0 X8, and the other one is a PCI Express 3.0 X1, at least electrically. And that basically concludes the outside and inside tour of my HP Enterprise Microserver Generation 10. I hope you enjoyed this overview. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.